A very uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I know we're all ready to go away for the holidays, but thank you for being here. And uh, it's a very historic day for us because I have with me here um, someone who has showed such great interest in the humanitarian um, problem that has hit Pakistan, Mr. Rajmohan Gandhi, who is the grandson of that very, very famous Mahatma of India and Pakistan and the entire Indian subcontinent. And it's a pleasure to introduce him here today because the Mahatma had a very special relationship with all of the Indian subcontinent and also the Muslims. My grandfather, Sir Abdullah Haroon, was a very personal friend of his. And uh, when my grandfather passed away, we still have Mr. Gandhi's letter where he said, to my grandmother, I would have trusted your husband with a blank check. And many a time he proved his selflessness. When I remember the fledgling Pakistani state did not receive its share from the then newly formed Indian government, the Mahatma went on a fast unto death in Delhi and the Indian government uh, had to buckle down and pay Pakistan its share. When the Hindu-Muslim riots took place in Calcutta, he not only went there with Hussein Shaheed Surawardi, uh, he brought together both elements and the rioting stopped in the city because he was fasting until it would stop and people realized uh, that it had to stop. And it was a because of one of these very reasons that got they quoted as, you know, we must get this man out of the way. Um, with that sort of a reference towards not just Hindu-Muslim unity, but Indian unity, um, which I was just talking to someone who was elucidating how he was at a church last night and he was pleased to see that all the faiths gathered the, gathered money for the people of Pakistan. So while Mr. Bessler announced yesterday that there's some sort of a standstill in Ocha getting funds in the United Nations, I'm pleased to say that a lot of the world, people of all races, all colors, and all religions are still keeping the faith and in these small places monies are being gathered which are going to have such an enormous aspect on Pakistan's future. So while the new news yesterday was somewhat ominous, today it is great. It's also great because we have Raj Mohan with us who's flown all the way from the University of Illinois, where he teaches. He's a historian and has a great family and has always been there to create the bridge between India and Pakistan. So without much ado, uh, may I thank him for being here today. And uh, it's my honor to be with him on the stage today. Rajmohan, would you like to take over? Uh, thank you, Sam. And thanks, all of you, for coming on, on this day. I really, really appreciate this. Um, so I'd like to say, first of all, that doing this event with uh, Ambassador Haroon is uh, deeply meaningful for me. Uh, because while still shaken by the magnitude of the disaster, it is to me uh, not only meaningful, it's moving uh, for me to be doing this together with, with him uh, before all of you. 
Now, we all know that in Pakistan, the sky and the mountains became oceans, and the waters came crashing down, swallowing towns, villages, homes, fields, roads, bridges, crops, belongings, schools, hospitals. For South Asia, it is the most destructive, most widespread natural calamity in living memory. Naturally, I want to add my voice to the appeal for generous support for the people of Pakistan who are in need. Now, 33 heroic men trapped under a deep mine in Chile have captured the imagination of much of America and the world, and I too feel and pray for those people. But I feel and pray also for the hundreds of thousands of courageous Pakistani children, women, men, and the elderly who in minutes lost what was built over a lifetime or what was inherited from the toil of earlier lifetimes, and who are ready nonetheless to face the future. These millions of Pakistan are life-loving, not death-loving millions. We all know uh, the saying that one person killed is a drama, a million killed is a statistic. In recent weeks, Pakistan has witnessed a million powerful dramas, each of them unique, each of them intensely personal, each involving shock and pain and courage and faith and hope and love. Now, I don't expect the international community or America to become aware of all the million individual Pakistani dramas or to keep track as the subjects of these dramas step into their darkened future. But I do expect and urge some of us to follow some lives and support them. We now know of acts of service and giving in Pakistan by group after group of ordinary Pakistanis who have taken food, tents, medicines, doctors to the hungry, to the sick, and to the homeless. Uh, recently, there has been some media reporting of this in Pakistan and outside. Young Pakistanis have given amazing leadership. On my campus at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, the Pakistani Graduate Students Association has done such impressive work that the city has just decided to give the association a special award. And I'm sure all of you are aware of groups like Pakistan Youth Alliance, Youth Catalyst Pakistan, Relief for Pakistan, Mercy Corps, Pehla Kadam, the group formed by Pakistani law students of the UK, to name only some of many, many and this is a very incomplete and purely illustrative list. 